Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I will be talking about my favorite books of 2022. In 2022, I read a total of 87 books and I have a top 11 favorites. I did have some other books that I really enjoyed, but they weren't, you know, my top favorites. So I did make a Goodreads list, which I will link down below, called 2022 favorites. And in that list, I just have general favorites of the year that I really liked. But some of those obviously did not make the top 11. If you want to know how my 2022 reading year went, I will link my 2022 reading and review and 2023 reading goals video down below. And I'm actually going to link some of my past favorites videos from previous years. So if you want to see what I liked a couple of years ago, those will be down below. Now for my top 11 favorite books of 2022. So coming in at number 11, we have Binding 13 and Keeping 13 by Chloe Walsh. These are book one and book two in the Boys of Tommen series. I'm including these two together because I could not separate them. I love both of these books equally. These first two books follow the same characters and the same couple. So Shannon ends up moving to a new school mid-year after being bullied at her old school and at this new school, she just wants to fly under the radar and make it through high school. And she ends up meeting Johnny, the school's rising rugby star, and he can't seem to forget about their first encounter, and he is determined to protect her from any harm. These books are obviously very long. They are very slow burn, very intense. There is some very heavy topics in these books. Emotional and physical abuse. Um, there's also lots of talk about mental health. These books are heartbreaking, but they're also really heartwarming and funny and cute. And I know I rated these pretty low. I did rate them three stars, but honestly, I could not stop thinking about these books and these characters and Johnny and Shannon. I think I just rated them quite low because I wasn't fully in the mood to read them and it took me forever to get through them, even though they're very addicting and very compelling. Johnny and Shannon were just so cute together and Johnny was so protective and so kind and so gentle with Shannon. I just loved their slow build for their relationship, how they truly became friends and it slowly became something more. I just absolutely loved these characters and the romance, and I honestly could not stop thinking about these books. Coming in at number 10, we have The Takeover by T.L. Swan. Claire's late husband's company is struggling, and she needs help with it, and in comes Tristan, who offers to buy the company from her, but she wants nothing to do with him. However, Tristan is a very determined man, and they both can't deny their attraction to each other. At the beginning of 2022, I started a video series where I would read a book that you guys would recommend, and this was the book that was recommended, and I was very hesitant to read this because I had read T.L. Swan in the past, and I somewhat enjoyed their books, but I still read this anyways, and I absolutely loved it. I loved Claire and Tristan's relationship. At first, it's kind of just them hooking up. It's nothing serious, but as time goes on, obviously they develop feelings, and Claire is a recent single mom. She lost her husband, so she is raising her kids on her own. That's a huge struggle for her, and Tristan doesn't really want anything to do with kids and like having a family and getting married and settling down and stuff, but he can't help but care for Claire and her sons and they just develop this beautiful bond. I just absolutely ended up falling in love with this book and thank you so much to the people who recommended this to me because I really loved it. Coming in at number nine is Sweet Thing by Renee Carlino. This follows Mia whose father has passed away unexpectedly and she goes to New York to run his cafe and kind of pick up after his life. And she ends up meeting Will, a struggling musician, and she rents out one of her rooms 
to Will. I actually read this in a reading vlog, so I will link that vlog down below. I had this book on my TBR since 2015, and I finally read it this year, and I just absolutely loved it. Mia is very confused on what she wants to do with her life, which I related a lot to, and she is obviously struggling with her dad's death, and I loved the conversations about grief and about just life and losing loved ones. Me and Will are both so connected to music. They literally speak to each other through music and it's so beautiful and heartwarming. It was obviously friends to lovers, but their relationship was a little messy and complicated, which did frustrate me, but I still loved this book and it makes me want to read everything that Renee Carlino has ever written. Coming in at number eight is Unraveling Him by Claire Kingsley. This is the third book in the Bailey Brothers series. After being poorly treated by her father, Fiona decides it is time for a new start. However, car troubles detour her to Evan Bailey, who is a grumpy custom car builder who hates her father. This was everything that I love in small town romances. It was grumpy sunshine, slow burn, a little bit of friends to lovers. It had a found family. There was forced proximity and they were kind of roommates at one point, which I loved. I just really loved Fiona and Evan's relationship and I loved how different they were. They were complete opposites, but they grew to love each other's little quirks and differences. It was just a very cute and sweet and heartfelt but hot romance. I loved the like end scene in here. I obviously don't want to spoil anything but the things that Evan does for Fiona in the end I just absolutely loved and I loved this so much that I want to get the alternate cover because that one's really cute too. Coming in at number seven, we have Bad Reputation by Krista and Becca Ritchie. Willow discovers that she has a famous older brother, so she decides to move across the country to connect with him and build a relationship with him. And in that process, she meets Garrison, who is a bad boy who has been vandalizing her brother's house with his friends. So this duet actually came out years ago, but this is the bind-up version. So both books are in this one book. And years ago when the authors were still writing the Addicted series, they were releasing, I don't want to say like short stories, but like short chapters or like short snippets of Willow and Garrison. So a lot of what happens in this book I have already read from like their website and stuff that they had released over the years. So none of this felt brand new to me, but I still really, really loved it. I love this whole addicted world and I love Willow and Garrison. I think they are kind of like another version of Lily and Lo. And I will say some of the pacing did feel a little off. I don't know if it's just because they combined both of the books together and the timeline felt like a little weird maybe. I'm not sure. Like something did feel off about the pacing of this book, but like I said, I just have a huge soft spot for this series and for Willow and Garrison and the whole gang. I also loved Garrison's development as a character. He truly grew and developed and became a better version of himself and Willow grew as well. I think she definitely just grew up but you could definitely see the changes in Garrison more and it was so nice to see them both very determined to make their relationship work even if everything was against them. They really really wanted to be with each other and knew that they wanted it to work. And I just really appreciated how they didn't let anything break them as a couple and they truly were friends first and I just loved their romance and their development as characters. Coming in at number six is A Million Kisses in Your Lifetime by Monica Murphy. Ren is the school's good girl and Crew is the school's bad boy and they have to team up on a school project together and Crew is determined to corrupt Ren. I honestly did not expect to like this that much. I started reading it and I was like, oh, I'm not sure about it, but I just fell in love with this book. I don't know why. I think it kind of reminded me a lot of some older new adult romances, kind of 
bully-esque, but not really. I'm also just a sucker for boy obsessed. Like I love when the male character is obsessed with the female character. I also loved the old money prep school vibes in here. And I loved how Crew at the beginning was very determined to corrupt Ren and kind of bring her to the dark side. And as soon as he really got to know her, he realized that he didn't really want to hurt her. He wanted to protect her and keep her safe and do nice things for her. There's also some wild, interesting stuff that happens in here, but overall, I just really liked the characters and the romance and the overall vibes of this whole book. Coming in at number five, we have Better Than the Movies by Lynn Painter. Liz is a huge hopeless romantic and she is trying to find her prince charming. Her middle school crush ends up moving back to town and she thinks he might be the one, but she needs help getting his attention. Liz's neighbor and enemy, Wes, is actually friends with her middle school crush, so she asks for his help. But the more they spend time together, the more Liz realizes that her Prince Charming might be right in front of her. This was such an adorable young adult rom-com. I loved Liz and Wes. I loved Liz as a female character. She was dealing with the fact that she was graduating high school and her mother had passed away several years ago and she was dealing with the fact that, you know, her mom is not there to witness some major life events. She loves love. She's obsessed with romance and rom-coms and just romance stories. And Wes was such a great male character. He was very competitive, very funny and kind, and he just wanted Liz to notice him. I love how you could pick up on all the little things that Wes did for Liz that she was just oblivious to. This was just such an adorable and wonderful young adult rom-com. I absolutely loved it and I could see myself rereading it over and over again. Coming in at number four, we have From Lukoff with Love by Mariana Zapata. This follows Jasmine who is struggling to keep her figure skating dreams alive until she gets this offer from Ivan that could change everything. So when I first read this book, I actually gave it five out of five stars, but the more I thought about it, the more I feel like it didn't really deserve a five, so I actually changed the rating to four stars. I did love this book, like obviously I gave it five stars to begin with, but there's one specific scene or like one thing in this book that's really bothered me and I honestly could not forget about it. Ivan has this nickname for Jasmine and it really bothered me, the reason behind the nickname, and it just made me uncomfortable and it kind of made me angry. So that's why I lowered it to four star. But regardless, I still really loved this book. I loved Jasmine and Ivan and their slow burn romance. I love how it's kind of hate to love, but also friends to lovers at the same time. Jasmine is at times kind of a difficult character to like, but I think that's kind of what I liked about her is that she wasn't a simple character to understand and to get to know. And I mean, she grew up in a big family and so she always had to fight for her own voice and fight for her own dreams. I love how Ivan always tried to take care of her and always just wanted the best for Jasmine. And I just love their development as characters and how they grew and I loved the pacing of their relationship. I love Mariana Zapata's slow burn romances. I feel like they're very realistic because you don't just automatically fall in love with somebody. So I love how realistic her books feel when it comes to falling in love with somebody. I did love the love confession scenes and the ending. It was just so beautiful and I did cry multiple times while reading this book. I'm still hesitant about giving it four stars, but the fact that I'm hesitant to give it five means I should give it four. So I still really loved this book though. Coming in at number three, we have Marrying Winterborn by Lisa Klepez. This is the second book in the Revenel series. Reese Winterborn, a successful self-made man, is an expert at getting what he wants. And from the moment he meets the shy aristocrat Lady Helen Revenel, he is determined to possess her. If he must take her virtue to ensure she marries him, so much the better. This was so perfect. I absolutely loved it. I annotated so much of it because this was just 
great. It was so romantic and sweet and funny, but also really sexy and hot. I loved Reese and Helen so much. They were complete opposites, but they worked so well together. Reese was just obsessed with Helen. He wanted her all the time and he just wanted her to be his. Reese was just so gentle and kind with Helen. Helen and Reese kind of always flirted with each other and teased each other, which I really loved. I just loved their relationship so much. There were kind of some slow moments in here. It kind of did drag a little bit towards the end, but I loved the ending and the like love confessions and all of their sex scenes. I just loved this book. It was just so perfect. I cannot wait to reread this at some point. Coming in at number two is 10 Trends to Seduce Your Best Friend by Penny Reed. Winnie and Byron have known each other for years, but they do not get along. Winnie is a science teacher who is trying to build her social media presence by sharing her love of all things science, and Brian is a famous author who avoids social media but after a video of them together goes viral, they are somewhat forced to fake an online relationship. I loved the characters and the romance so much. I think the only thing I didn't love about this is the ending. That's the only thing I wasn't super keen on this book, but other than that, I am just obsessed with it. I immediately wanted to reread it after I read it the first time. I did find some of the science talk a little boring, but I love how passionate Winnie was about it, and I love how she had this huge goal of saying that you could be into science and be a really smart person, but also still love girly things and love makeup and clothes and that you can love both and you shouldn't have to pick one or the other. Byron is a very complicated male character. He is very quiet, kind of brooding. The way that Byron just loved Winnie and he loved her from day one and he said, oh my god, he said amazing, amazing things. He had this drunk love confession that I'm never going to forget about because it was just so beautiful and even though he was drunk, you could tell like he truly meant it and I'm just obsessed with that. I am obsessed with this book and Winnie and Byron's relationship. There was definitely some miscommunication, misunderstanding a lot that happened in this book, but I feel like Winnie and Byron both did a really good job of communicating. They weren't always very clear on their communication, but they tried to communicate and I'm just obsessed with their relationship in this book and now that I'm talking about it, I really want to reread this already because it was just so good and I'm so sad about the ending. I don't want to spoil anything, but the ending was just like a little anticlimactic. That's all I'm going to say. And finally, my favorite book of 2022 is The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. Florence is a ghostwriter for a famous romance author, but after a bad breakup, Florence no longer believes in romance and can't continue to write romance despite her new editor, Benji, reminding her that it's in her contract. After getting a devastating phone call that makes her run home, while at home she is facing her past and present when Ben shows up at her family's funeral home, but he's not alive. He's a ghost. With everything going on, it makes Florence question everything about life, love, and death. This book was so beautiful, heartwarming, heartbreaking, and just magical. I loved Florence as a female character, and I loved her family and her relationship with her family. The whole vibe of this book was just so unique and different and refreshing. This book just made me feel so hopeful, even though it's kind of sad. It felt like each word and each paragraph and each sentence was meant to be in this book. It just feels like this book is a work of art, honestly. Florence's family runs this funeral home, so they are constantly surrounded by life and death. It kind of gives like this modern like Adam's family vibes. It's very autumnal and a little creepy, but it also feels kind of like a warm hug on a cold and cool day. Like I said, this book um, discusses death a lot and grief, and I loved the conversations in here about that, and this book made me look at death and life even a little differently. It gave me this different perspective that I never really had on 
death and life before. Florence and Ben had so many things in their past that connected them and made them realize that they were kind of meant to be together. I loved the romance, but I loved everything else about it. I just loved the characters and the family and the overall vibes and just everything about this book was so perfect and different and it was exactly what I needed in the right time. I also loved the ending. The ending of this book was just so beautiful. I feel like I did kind of rush myself while reading this towards the end because I just wanted to see what happened. So I really do need to reread this already because it was just phenomenal and definitely probably a new favorite book. So those were all my top 11 favorite books of 2022. Let me know if you have read any of these books and what you think about them or let me know what your favorite books of 2022 were. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to give this video a like, subscribe, follow me on all my other social media, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!